Hi, I'm Alex. And I'm Colin. And we're here today to talk to you about 10 on 1, a skill that's going to make your analysis much more nuanced and interesting. What is 10 on 1, Colin? So 10 on 1, Alex, is when you choose one detail and then try to make multiple, up to 10 even, interpretive leaps about that one detail. Right, and so you make many different interpretive leaps, maybe not 10, but some number, rather than doing one on 10, which is where you have one claim and you just say 10 different things to support it, but your claim never really goes anywhere. Right, and there are maybe two different ways of thinking about doing 10 on one. One way is to take an entire film scene and look at one cinematic detail, one element throughout the scene and make interpretive leaps about how that one thing works, like camera work or lighting, for example. Yeah, and I think that's what most instructors mean when they ask you to do 10 on one. But it's possible that your instructor might want you to look at a very specific moment within the scene, a single detail, a single thing that happens, or a single thing someone says, and offer many different, even contradictory interpretations of that one thing. Great. So Alex, right now let's take a look at this uh, in a scene from The Dark Knight. And specifically, why don't we take a look at the camera work as Sounds our detail. Good. So this is an interview scene between Gordon and the Joker, and right now the camera is relatively still in a close-up. Yes, and it's also level with the two characters. So between the close-up social distance and the level camera angle, we feel like we're really close with these characters, almost like we're in the scene with them. So the social distance between them is close and intimate, but the social distance between the characters and the viewer is also close and intimate. Great, Alex. This is an interesting moment right there. It's the first time the camera ever looks Good up at somebody, cop, maybe cop. suggesting that Gordon is in power or control in that moment. But that's all about to change here when Gordon leaves. Right, so Gordon exits on the side of the room that's light, and suddenly we're looking at the side of the room that was dark, but it's no longer dark. It's now lit up. What do you make of this moment? Well, Alex, to me, the first thing it suggests is that Batman is coming from the dark, that he, which might imply a kind of evil or bad guy uh, position. That's really interesting, especially since we also see him appearing on the Joker side of the room. If we think of the moments leading up to this as a kind of standoff between Joker and Gordon, we're seeing Batman appear on Joker's side of that standoff, not Gordon. Again, like you're saying, suggesting some sort of alignment with evil or villainy rather than alignment with the good guy, the police officer, Gordon. Right, so I can see one, one implication here might be that we have Gordon representing the law and the other side of the table, the outlaws, right? Yeah, but I think we could also cast that binary in a few different ways. Maybe Gordon represents characters who are unmasked and have nothing to hide, and here we're seeing the masked characters who do have something to hide. Great. It's also important to me here that we have the Joker framed very, very close to us, the viewers, and Batman further behind, right? This is social distance, and it makes us feel more intimate, maybe even uh, implying that we should empathize with the Joker. I think that's right. We're looking at him. We're maybe thinking about what he's thinking. You know, he's not looking directly at us. He's almost looking back at Batman. But we can wonder, what is he thinking in this moment? We feel close to him. Whereas by contrast, we feel really far away from Batman. We can't even see Batman's face, there's no way to empathize with him here. If anything, he's like the dark, shadowy villain mm. who appears in this creepy way out of nowhere behind who in a normal shot would be the good guy, but here it's the Joker. Peculiar. Let's roll the clip and see what, how the, those dynamics change throughout the rest of the scene. Whoa! So right there, the camera dove down with the Joker's head, almost putting us in the Joker's shoes. Again, aligning us in an empathetic way, potentially, uh, with the Joker. Yeah, I think that's right. So throughout this scene, we're going to continue to see camera work that suggests we should identify with the Joker. I think there's also some camera work that suggests identification with Batman. Notice here, we're over Batman's shoulder, looking at Joker. So we're a little more aligned with him here, although we aren't exactly in his perspective either. Interesting. I'm also beginning to notice that the camera is shifting a little bit, a little bit of movement. I realized for the first time in the scene that it's handheld. What do you make of that, Alex? 
Well, earlier when we saw Gordon and Joker, the camera was more stable, suggesting something calm, controlled. This is starting to feel a little bit out of control, a little unstable. It makes me wonder who's in control in this scene, right? It also destabilizes or undermines my original binary that I had figured out in this scene, which was, you know, hero and villain, good guy and bad guy. Now this camera work suggests maybe that binary is not as clear as I initially thought it was. Yeah, instead we see two characters who are both aligned by a kind of instability, potentially, as they try to vie for control in the scene. Ah, aligned together. That's interesting. As if the Joker and Batman might be on the same side, whatever that might mean. The same side of good and evil, perchance. Yes, although notice that our camera angles are still going back and forth. We're mostly not seeing them in the shot together right now. They're still in a standoff, a little bit like the standoff Gordon had with the Joker earlier, but again, a different emotional charge. This, this standoff is less controlled, a little scarier maybe? Great. So this is particularly interesting right here, this moment. All of a sudden, the camera work shifts, moves, violent movement, and thrown against the wall. Now we're given the perspective of the viewers. That's fascinating. Yes, and we're seeing them both in the scene together, sorry, in the same frame together a lot more now. Um, sometimes in profile, sometimes close up, but we have less of a sense of, uh, see here, this profile view. We get to see both of them sort of on level with each other as they try to negotiate this power dynamic. Right, and the camera movement was was marching closer to them, heightening the tension in this scene and, and raising the climax of who is in control. And then boom, here we have Batman moving away, but looking down on the Joker right there. Power dynamic. Absolutely, and so now they've sealed off the room. It's just Batman and Joker. Everything at this point is about who is in control. And it seems like Batman is in control because he's throwing people around. And look at these interesting camera angles. We have the camera angle looking up at Batman, showing he's in power, and looking down at the Joker, presumably showing he's he's out of power and out of control. Right, and Batman's fist. This is not an over the shoulder. This is at his arm height, reinforcing the violence that this knight, this potential hero, is, take, is doing, and potentially uh, positioning the Joker in the role of a victim. Yeah, visually he really looks like the victim here. And notice that even in these shots where we're looking down at the Joker, we're not really in Batman's perspective. So we're still asked to step outside of these characters a little bit. You know, earlier we talked about how much we're invited to uh, maybe feel intimate with them or identify with them, but for the most part we're actually a little bit outside of them always, a little bit judging them and thinking about their dynamic rather than really getting inside the dynamic. Interesting. You know, I think it's important that you're pointing out the visuality of these camera dynamics and who's in control of this scene, because if you listen to the dialogue of this scene, the Joker is clearly in control. He's manipulating Batman in this scene with his words, but visually we get a different picture. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And it reinforces one of the central themes of the film, which is one of masking. So appearances can be deceiving. Sometimes we wear one face and underneath we have another, which is maybe one thing that this scene is wanting us to think about. And perhaps a claim that I might make on an essay or micro theme. I hope you do. And I hope you at home are able to make interesting claims in your essays and micro themes using 10 on 1. Thanks, guys.